Hey guys, we're back. It's been a while, and we thank you guys for tuning in again. Uh, we had a lot to catch up on on the next episode of the 911 Strong Podcast. Station to all units. Prepare to copy. You're listening to the 911 Strong Podcast. Don't act like I never told you. With Aram and Kristen, bringing you stimulating discussion. No, I like the sound of that. An entertaining conversation. And now, here's Kristen and Aram. Hey guys, welcome back. Kristen, welcome back. Hi, nice to be back. I know, it's, it's been a while. I think people thought it we has. had a falling out. Didn't we? Uh, well, we always have our little spats, but <laughs> we're like brother and sister. I don't think we'll ever completely uh, cut, the, cut the cord. Cut the tie. But we, no, we were just busy. Yeah. Life, life happens. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you guys that have listened in to our show or know us and follow us on social media, we have families and... Um, you know, it's just a busy time of year for us. Uh, yeah. What I think what kicked it off for us was, um, well, the lapse in, in podcast was our, my, Liz and I, we had our anniversary trip mm-hmm. and we went out to Utah and that took a week and then we got back from that and I think we had a series of overtime shifts and it was yeah. just, it just didn't work out. And, you know, for those of you that know, we have full-time jobs, full-time families it's just we squeeze in the podcast when we can. Um, sometimes we we record two episodes in one day. Um, and we actually do a wardrobe tra- change for the for the people at view. So on, there goes the magic. <laughs> yeah, on YouTube. Um, but on radio or, or on the podcast, the audio, you guys don't know what we were. For all you know, we could be in our bathrobes or something. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So um, what what did you do during your time off? Well, yeah, time off away from here, like you said, I think. Um, Nothing spectacular as far as like going on any trips, but um, my kids are involved in sports, so yeah. we've been doing a lot of softball. Started, yeah, yeah, a lot of softball practices and games and everything, and going to and from. Um, we got my Volkswagen bus back. Yes, I was there. So for that's that. exciting, but kind of we're um, for those of you who don't know, I have a '71 Volkswagen bus that I've had since I was 18, and um, we finally took it in to go get it painted, and we took it in in May. And it isn't painted one yeah. bit. The guy didn't do squat with it. So like, it's kind of disappointing, but disappointing, but at least you got your money back. We got our money back. Yeah. He's very gracious about giving us our money back and everything. It wasn't an argument. And, uh, so we're just going to fix up the interior instead. Yeah. So you had that bus since you were 18 Yeah. and then you had a period where you didn't, you weren't the owner and you, right. you actually found it and got it back. Well, I sold it to my dad. My dad took took it on and started rebuilding the engine with my daughter, my oldest, Chaseland, who's took 17. took the magic of the story away. Sorry. Let's say where you found it from. I gave it away to some <laughs> random stranger. He drove it across <laughs> the country, and I magically found it in the want the headlines? Uh, <laughs> Kristen Hodge reunited with her first vehicle. It returned after home. 18 years. <laughs> But yeah, so we did that. And then, um, oh, so the, the week after Aram, um, spent just hanging out with his lovely wife and exploring, we, um, were invited to do a talk at the Rotary Club. Oh yeah. At, um, yeah. And that was really cool. So it was not just the Rotary Club, but it was the, uh, Newport beach Balboa. slash Balboa yes. Rotary Club. And get this, they have their meetings at um, the Corinthian Bahia Yacht Club. Yeah, it was really nice. Have you ever been to a yacht club before? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who the demographic of our audience is, but, uh, I, oh, actually, we, we have a few from the, the Rotary Club uh, that subscribe to our podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to be careful of what I say. But it was our first time at a yacht yeah. club, and we walked in super intimidated. And then we were <laughs> greeted by like guys like Roger, Brett, Michael, um, they were just super nice and, uh, very warm. Welcome yeah, Lauren, mm-hmm. uh, Courtney. Uh, yeah. I, they were so down to earth and it's like, I, I don't want to say they're different people, but when you, when you, when you hear the term yacht club, you think people are going to be different. Yeah. But I was surprised at how down to earth and regular mm-hmm. these people were. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it was nice to be, uh, treated like VIPs. Yeah. So Kristen and I, uh, were asked to speak about, um, our podcast and um, our lives as, as as a dispatcher and police officer. And um, I got to say, they, they were really into it. They started mm-hmm. asking questions right away. And um, 
I'm glad we had answers for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was no filtering that day, um, and the food was really good. <laughs> it was. It was very nice. It was very nice. They were really receptive to yeah. everything. So as, we, um, as we're growing this podcast, thanks to you guys who continue to subscribe and leave us good reviews, um, we have to do some self-promoting on our own. So um, that's why it's nice to do these live events. Mm-hmm. Um, and each opportunity we get to go out there and talk about not, not just promoting the podcast, but promoting law enforcement in a positive way. That's what we like to do and we'll take those opportunities so that's in a long roundabout way our excuse as to where we've been for the last three (laughs) weeks um but uh you know that's 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 what we did that's life um yeah and that's it's who we are you get the unfiltered version of us we're we're busy busy people yeah Um, and you mentioned the kids doing softball i i don't know how you how softball parents do it especially full-time it's crazy because i mean you guys are at practice yeah. And then you guys have multiple games during the week too, right? Yeah. We have games and practices throughout the week. And, you know, I know that there's some moms out there that just do it all on their own. Yeah. And I have no idea how they do it because thank God I have my oldest daughter who's able to drive and she can take her sisters right. around now that she's had her, her permit for or her driver's license. So, um, she's able to take them to and from some practices when my husband's working or when I'm working, my mother-in-law helps out too, but it's just a big old jumble as to how I schedule who drives where, who drops off who and what, and trying to make it to every kid's game. So we're not at one more than the other. And it is kind of chaotic, but it's just nonstop. Kind of like what you do as a dispatcher, you're coordinating priority one, priority two, sending units this way. At work, outside of work. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't stop, but yeah, it's yeah. worth it. But yeah, it, it's crazy. We make them do their homework in the car because we won't have time by the time we get home. They have to change, eat, and leave. Yeah. So, well, I noticed you're wearing uh, your fall sweater. It's uh, indicative of the weather change. <laughs> Where's your you're missing sweater your, weather? You're missing my, your scarf and your pumpkin spice something. and my UGG boots. Yeah, <laughs> so basic. I know. Actually, you know what? I have not had any pumpkin spice yeah. coffee. Actually, today is the first time I've had coffee in. About roughly two and a half to three months. Yeah, you were. So, cut, I, well, I know why you were cutting out coffee, but um, mm-hmm. you might maybe you want to share. So I was um, suffering. Well, I feel like I was suffering something similar to like adrenal fatigue from all of the competitions I was doing and the yo-yo dieting, basically, and all the supplements I was taking, mm-hmm. and I was just feeling really, really tired, like more than I should be. Even when I was eating right, even when I was working out, and when I stopped working out, when I got enough sleep, it just always felt like I was maybe running off of an hour of sleep, yeah. and I was just to that point where I just wanted to roll up in a ball and cry because I was so tired. Um, and so, yeah, I start I cut out all the supplements, and then now I'm cutting out the caffeine. And I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, I haven't had caffeine in like I said, two and a half to three months. So that's crazy. I, yeah. I, I need my coffee. Every it's morning. just nuts. No, I know I drink. You guys are going to think like I'm crazy. I think Aaron picked on me last time I mentioned it, but it's something called dandy tea and it's from dandelions and some other roots and herbs and stuff. Yeah. Basically some gardener <laughs> took his clippings, <laughs> bagged it up. It's and like put- dirt <laughs> <laughs> and like weed shreddings, but actually it's really not that bad. And yeah. I didn't go through any caffeine withdrawals when I substituted it in. I think it was just like a mind thing that I mm. needed that in the morning, taking the kids to school and going to work and stuff. Right. And yeah, it's been fine ever since. And I feel like I have more energy and there's no crash. I haven't been feeling a crash. Oh, cool. So it's been really nice. What well, was, um, just like we needed caffeine to, to get going in our day when Liz and I were on our trip mm-hmm. right before we left. We got this bad boy. Oh, I saw that. So rugged meats. We 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 did an episode where we talked about um, police nutrition and fitness and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we talked about um, I keep rugged meats in my bag, and I know your family loves rugged yes. meats. And uh, they were nice enough to send us a little gift pack. So um, they said at any time that mm-hmm. this thing starts to get thin and it's packed. I mean, packed. And there's new flavors too, like uh, there's barbecue. I don't think he had the no, chance to try I barbecue. No, I haven't. But I am staring down that jalapeno. Oh one. yeah, here, take it for. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, it's mine. Just kidding. It's all right. There's another one over here. But there's jalapeno. There's original. There's barbecue. There's sriracha. Um, it's just great. And as I mentioned before, they're low fat, high protein. They don't use fillers. Uh, mm-hmm. No nitrates. No. Uh, it's gluten free, and it's just meat, like yeah. meat you'd get from a steak. They put it into a meat stick because so it's not like they took the leftovers like you'd get from you know liquor store brands or something. Yeah. So it's really oh, good yeah. for you. And they offered us an extension to give our guests and our listeners um, 
a good amount of money off if you make yes. an order at ruggedmeats.com, ruggedmeats.com, and use code 911 strong. You and your family can enjoy the same meat sticks that we do at a discounted rate. That's ruggedmeats.com, code word 911 strong. And it's a small family owned business, too. Yeah, firefighter, so actually. Let's help them out. Yeah, firefighter businesses, eh, we'll promote them. <laughs> It They're doing nine- a lot of work around California yeah. right now, though. It, with it all is nine one one strong, and that nine one one is not unique to police officers. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so we are going to have a firefighter guest here very soon from Arizona. Uh, he does a lot of funny stuff. Uh, he he kind of does what I do on social media, but does it better. <laughs> and he does it as a fire. Uh, well, and he from, has facial hair, right? Yeah, he's got this ridiculous <laughs> Lorax style mustache. Uh, but firefighters have the luxury of growing, growing facial hair, so I, I'm, I'm excited to, to be able to have him on the show when we do. Uh, another thing, talk, previewing a future episode, um, Kristen and I are kind of coming down from uh, a very traumatic week, mm-hmm. uh, including Danny, who couldn't be with us today because uh, he's he's uh, actually doing something related to that. And because it's still under investigation, we can't really go into the specifics of it. But uh, next week, we're going to be recording um, our experience with a very traumatic incident that we experienced together um, on the same team um, uh, just last week. And I can't wait to share what we had gone through and uh, maybe talk about some of the good things that happened and some of the shortfalls uh, that we saw that we could do better. Yeah. Uh, Not unique to our agency, but um, as police departments in a whole Mm -hmm. and that's coming off of you know we had another suicide in in nypd they were rocked by another suicide Mm -hmm. and that's coming off the heels in august where they had nine suicides Um, so there's obviously something that we need to discuss and talk about and uh, that's going to be a really good episode so i hope you guys tune in next week um, when we bring that one to you so with that said today uh yesterday christian and i put out on our podcast um instagram account um we were we mentioned that we had taken a break and that we're coming back, uh, but that we wanted your help to talk about what we're, our topic was going to be. And one that we thought was really good because we get this question a lot is how we entered into our careers as dispatchers and police officers, what it took, what our experiences were, mm-hmm. and the advice for people seeking um, uh, dis- becoming a dispatcher or a police officer as their career choice. And it's quite different. What we went through 20 years ago as opposed to what people have to go through now is quite different. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, you, um, I don't even know how, what the process is for dispatchers, um, how dispatchers become dispatchers. dispatchers. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, I mean, obviously you go through a background process Yeah. because you're given security clearance to access, um, you know, driver's license records yeah. and, mm-hmm. and all these other federal databases. So mm-hmm. I, I'd assume your background process is pretty strict, right? Yeah, I think ours is probably just as strict as yours. Like they still go through and talk to our family members, our neighbors, our um, past employers, coworkers, that past kind of boyfriends. Thing. Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do talk about they, they they do talk to past relationships, right? Yeah, I don't think I had one at the moment, okay. so I don't think they did for me. Yeah. But um, I they do. They talk to everybody in your background, basically everybody who's relevant. And um, just to get a good idea of who you are on your off time, too. How far back do they go? Like, are we talking high school or? I mean, for me, it was really, I was really young. I was, when I was going through my backgrounds, I was 18. So I had just graduated like a year before I started. So there's really, yeah, I was a baby. I didn't know what the heck I was signing up for, literally. But, um, there, so there wasn't really that much. I was a grocer at Vons and then (laughs) I, (laughs) I worked at, um, at a conv- not a convalescent home, but like a retired home. So I mean, I guess they could have talked to some of the customers. If you'd Wait, call that can be an episode. <laughs> of, so I want to hear some stories. Dude, that was the best job ever. Seriously, okay. I love working yeah. at a retirement home. Right. They're the most amazing people. Speaking to to the elderly is amazing, yeah. and just learning That's from my them. Niece is They're so right cool. She's sixteen, got her, her driver's license, mm-hmm. and she decided she's going to make use of her driver's license, and she got a job at a senior home. Yeah, that was my first yeah. job, and I love it. It was such a great, great experience. But um, so yeah, there wasn't too much for them to go back into, and I was a very, um, I guess I was a good kid. I was I was raised in a bubble basically, yeah. so not much for them to investigate. Um, but. Yeah, and then uh, we do a psych also, and um, and that was pretty much. I mean, we do our test. We sign up. You do your test. If you pass the test, then you do um, your psych and your background, and then um, you have an oral interview. And if you pass all of those, 
And depending on where you band, then you get hired. Hmm. So I think more so it's, it's not, I, I guess it would be kind of hard to pass all of that if you do have something in your background, but the hard part for dispatch is the training. Yeah. Our training has a really high turnover rate. Yeah. I, I've uh, witnessed it firsthand. Um, mm. I think in the last five years we've had a number of trainees and I think you were, we only retained maybe an eighth of them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, and I think it's the luck of the draw too. You mentioned the, the training phase, but the background phase because they they rate you amongst your competitors, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have a squeaky clean background and you're going against people that might have one or two blemishes, you're yeah. obviously going to be the, the, the one that has the most accumulated points. Yeah. But let's just say you have a blemish mm -hmm. and, and you know, the other competitors have blemishes as well. Mm -hmm. Now they're discussing, they're trying to decipher which blemish is the least. Is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, you know, if you don't make it, through backgrounds your first time, don't get discouraged. Yeah. You just have to apply again and maybe a different mm -hmm. agency might be a better fit. Yeah. Uh, cause we, we had one that we knew personally that uh, applied at our agency and, and didn't make it and she applied somewhere else and got hired there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think it's the same for law enforcement as well. Um, but before we get into that, uh, talk about why your training phase is so difficult. Um, I think it varies per for each person, but there's like a lot of codes you have to memorize. Yeah. A lot of the crimes and um, what criteria needs to be met to be a certain crime, like, a, for example, like a burglary and a robbery, you know, people always call up, oh, my house was robbed. Well, yeah. you can't really stick up a house and right. rob it, you know, it, yeah. but they don't know that because you're going off of TV and Hollywood and all that crap that the TV puts out there, which is what I understood, too, when I first started. I didn't know any better. Right. So, um, but yeah, so you would just have to go, you'd have to be able to differentiate between all of those while you're talking to somebody on the phone in the heat of the moment. So not everybody can think that quickly on their feet. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, you have to memorize all of that stuff and then you have to be able to remain calm the entire time. Somebody's either yelling at you out of sheer panic or just because they hate your guts, just because you're the person that answered the phone yeah. and, um, be able to get them the help that they need in the most efficient, efficient manner possible. And then <clears throat> once that's all done and you're able to answer those questions, then at least at my department, we move you on to the radio portion. And the radio portion is a whole other intimidating factor because now you know that everybody that are, everyone that's your peers is now listening to you and judging you as to how you sound on the radio. If you even know what you're doing on the radio, right. um, if you can understand them. And so there's just the whole trust aspect. It has a lot of stress put on it on top of making sure you're sending units to the right place, making sure they get all the information they need and sending them the backs, like other units to assist them if it's a hectic type call. Um, That's a lot. It, it is a lot. And then you have to merge both of them together because yeah. sometimes we have to do the phones while we're on the radio or do the radio while we're on the phones. And it's so there's a lot of like stress to it. And some people don't understand, like, if you don't do what's necessary, you could you could kill somebody. You could play a part in killing an officer or killing um, a civilian. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. uh, that, and that's something that people don't realize is the gravity of, of what goes on. The information that you put out mm -hmm. has a lot of weight to it. Yes. Now, um, you don't, for those that are listening, contemplating a career in dispatch, you, ob in my opinion, you obviously don't expect them to be perfect because you no. can't be perfect until years down the line. Mm -hmm. You just, are you looking for potential at this point to see, yeah, you're going to expect them to mess up. Yes. But you, you are look. are you looking for aptitude, potential or gr areas of growth? What are you looking for to sign them off? Um, I haven't been personally on the board of when we do the interviews, but when we discuss it amongst ourselves, it's basically like you want to be able to have somebody that is quick to learn it that doesn't mind asking questions, but then once they're asked, like can actually put them to use mm -hmm. and, um, that you're able to mold them basically right. that they're able to learn. It doesn't matter the age, as long as they're able to learn, like some of us that are older, yes, it's harder to go through change and learn stuff and be that quick on things. But then again, some of the younger ones don't have that skill either. So right. the age, I really wouldn't let that get in the way, but you have to be able to learn and you have to want it. And you can tell like some people, we can't make you um, study for dispatch when you're not on the clock, Right. but we can definitely tell who really wants it more. 
Right. So if you want it, then you're going to study what down on your off time when you're not yeah. getting paid for it, because right. it is a stat serious of a job. And you do have to think about it because when you come back to work, if you're not studying that first day of training is basically washed because you have to go back over everything all over again. Yeah, that's a, that's a kind of a lost art, right? I mean, that, mm-hmm. that type of attitude where he, someone really wants the job, yeah. they're going to put in that extra effort. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you can't make them do it because yeah. there's, there's laws of labor laws. Um, but if someone really wants a job, they're going to invest that time off yes. duty, right? Just mm-hmm. like if you're going to promote, they don't give you time to study. Right. You're going to have to study on your own time. Yeah. And it's the same thing about wanting to get off training. If you want to get off training and you're deficient in a certain area, guess what? I'm going to be at home studying yeah. that area of deficiency. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think it's changed or is, it, or is it the same from when you were going through it as opposed to now? Um, as far as wanting to study and wanting to get no, the job, well, the we drive, know, we know that I, I, we, <laughs> not even yes. asking you, I know, <laughs> yeah, we have our opinions of, um, I, I don't know. I, I can't say this about all the millennials. Um, Only my experience. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, cause we've had a handful of, we've had millennials. Yeah. I, that's all we're dealing with. But I would say for the most part, we lucked out with our millennials. They, they don't come in with that sense of entitlement. they, they work hard. Mm. Um, I think it's a matter of grooming them from the very beginning. But yeah. we have had those that didn't make it because mm. they come in with this this sense of entitlement that mm-hmm. we're going to hand the job to them. Yeah. And they obviously don't make it because that's just how that, you know, yeah. they're not willing, willing to put the effort in. Um, and that's, it shows the result of <laughs> yeah. um, not putting effort in is see you later. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, what I was getting at is, do you think the process of getting hired and going through training is the same today as it was to when you were going through 20 years ago? I think the process is probably the, the same as far as getting initially hired mm-hmm. because they still go through the, the, I'm sure the test is a little bit different, but that part is the, the same, but the training phase is definitely different because we've been told we need to be kinder and gentler. Okay. So I understand that to an extent, but at the same time, like, it's a serious job and it calls for a serious time and we're not here to hang out or play around right. and be friends. Like yeah. that can definitely come after. Right. But right now it's like, we're serious. Yeah. This is a serious job. It's not, we're not here just to kick back and chat. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. You have to establish the professional relationship mm-hmm. before you can worry about the personal friendships and stuff that can develop later. Yeah. But right now, I mean, yeah, yeah it's hard to develop. It, it's hard to invest yourself in a friendship or personally with someone, especially when you know that this person may not make it. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. Um, but w- without having that knowledge the person could be doing really, really well yeah. and, and you can foresee this person making it, but still mm-hmm. the, the personal relationships come after the, the professional yeah. development. So, um, I think you're right. When I was going through training, it was very, very hard field training. Mm-hmm. The FTOs, they just, I mean, if they had bull whips, they would, you know, that's how <laughs> things work. Yeah. Um, and they, they were rough on you. They, they made some trainees cry. They made them feel mm-hmm. really worthless. Yeah. Um, but because they had, they justified that kind of like the tough love that, you know, I don't know if, if you were ever spanked, but my dad used to give me some hellacious beatings growing oh, up. Oh yeah. I and was. He, he would tell me it's because I loved you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this doesn't feel like I'm love. I'm glad you don't love me that much. <laughs> um, but that's the same thing that your field training officers gave us. They yeah. were like. You know, I'm hard on you because um, you're going to get it a lot harder from the public. You know, yeah. You're going to be in situations where you're fighting for your life. This is nothing. You mm-hmm. need to develop tough skin. Yeah. Well, we can't do that today. No. Right? No. I remember when you guys wouldn't know where you were at uh, and your trainer yep. or FTO would drop you off at a corner or wherever mid-block and be like, go find out where we are. Yeah. You know, I think there was a an episode. I can't remember what the... This the South TV Land? series, yeah, on Southland, South yeah, where they're like, "All right, you're dead, basically, because yeah. you yeah, don't know where you are." Yeah, you can tell the person that was the, the technical advisor for that show mm-hmm. was someone that's been around the block. Yes, that was. I think that's the closest show I've seen that's yeah. like pretty relatable. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I um, that's another episode. Someone asked us what, uh, yeah. to answer a question um, as to what our favorite TV shows, police related TV shows, were, and that definitely was up there. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, the, the if you don't know the story behind what Kristen just referenced is. Your your FTO will be driving because they don't want to hand you the keys yet in the first couple of phases. <laughs> uh, they, don't, they don't trust you to drive the, the rig. Mm-hmm. And um, as a trainee, you'll be in the passenger seat and you'll be like nose deep in paperwork or a map trying to figure out where you are. And then the field training officer will look for an opportunity to, to stop the car and say, all right, I've been shot. Where am I? And you're panicking because you don't know. And he knows you don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like, where am I? I'm dying. I'm bleeding out right now. What are you going to tell dispatch? Get on the radio. Get, you know, t- Tell them where we are. 
And then obviously the lesson is you don't know where you are. And it says, get out of the car, Mm -hmm. go find the intersection and tell me where we are. Yeah. And then from that moment on, you'll pay attention to your surroundings. Yeah. But see, it's stuff like that that really hammers into your head like, crap, this is the stuff I need to know. And you're not able to do that anymore. So it's just kind of like, well, if and when this happens, this is what you need to know. But it doesn't really sink in as some people it will. Yeah. Some people get the importance, but I mean, it's times like that where you're kind of shaken and jilted that you're like, I'm not going to forget this anymore. I, I think the pressures are different too. Cause back then they were, they didn't care if you made it off training or not. They're like, eh, if, yeah, I, I think some of them actually took pride in rolling you up as a trainee. In my first department. I, I know, know there's some of them that did like to uh, yeah. knock the trainees. And, um, yeah. but I, I think the other thing is today there's so much pressure because there's so much uh, departments are having to do much more with less and have to be cognizant mm-hmm. of their budgets that there's a lot more pressure to retain the people that it, they just finished, you know, a full yeah. background packet on, which costs a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And with that said, um, you know, there's not that one thing I know that's different. Um, cause as a patrol sergeant, one of the things that frustrates me is the lack of knowledge of maps. Yeah. Um, when we were on training, <laughs> we had to know every hundred block, every street. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a major city. It's the 10th largest city out of 88 cities in LA County. And when I was in training, we were the eighth largest. Yeah. But we had to not only memorize the major streets, we had to memorize the, the in between streets. Yeah. And uh, we had map tests. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, not just our agency, but I know a lot of agencies do this now. They GPS everything. They'll tell yeah. them, hey, well, back then they relied on the Thomas Guide. We have technology now. Yeah. So, yeah, I expect you to use technology. I'm like, no, no. Yeah. Because technology is going to fail one day. Yeah, what happens when an earthquake hits and knocks out right? all the towers? Or mm-hmm. what if you're on a containment and you don't have your phone on you? Because you can't have your phone on you. And now you've got yeah. to coordinate positions for officers. Mm-hmm. But you don't know what the street is on the other side or next to you. Yeah. So that's why it's it's really important. Obviously, those things come, come about after you've driven around the city for years. Um, but th- that's... The expectation is different now, and I think that's one of the big biggest things that I've noticed is different is mm-hmm. the expectation, the pressure to, to do well on training is a little bit, I don't know, I'll get in trouble for saying this, but the, the training officers now are a little softer, I think, than yeah. they were back in the day. Yeah. And then if you are one of those old school uh, FTOs today, you, you're, you know, and you do some of those old school techniques, you'll just get talked to by the Scrutinized more. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think the pendulum sp- swings both ways. Um I remember talking to some of the old school officers uh, that recently retired. They said that they've seen it go both ways, even during the 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. It went from really hard to really soft to really hard again. Uh, it's just, it, it's based on the environment. You know? Yeah. I think with all the police shootings and mm. and stuff that's going on, people criticizing even more, I, I think we'll see the pendulum swing the other way where training will be a lot more tougher. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. I think um, I'd like to hear some feedback from people about that. Um, so if they want to, uh, go into our Instagrams and um, tell us their opinions. Maybe we'll share that on the next episode. Yeah. We'll recap that. But um, yeah, it's a different time. Definitely a different time. Well, what do you guys look for in an officer who, who wants to get hired? Um, I, I think it's a lot of the same. Someone mm-hmm. that uh, obviously this isn't a job. Mm-hmm. It's a career. So I think we, we what we try to do in the interview process is weed out the individuals that are just looking at this as a job. It's mm-hmm. a, it's, it's a career that lasts 30 years. I mean, one of my last trainees, he was 21 years old and he fell under the new retirement plan, which required him to work until he was 57 and a half. Ugh. So can you imagine doing 36 and a half years of this job? No. Yeah. It's having to go through what you do. So we yeah. look for people that can, Yeah. that'll have the attitude, um, to finish this through. So, you don't necessarily need a degree to do this job or mm. you don't need to have a, a physical skill set that's specific to police officers. You have to have a willingness to get to achieve those things. So, yeah. you know, at some point, if you decide you're going to promote, we want to know that you're going to be the type of person that's going to maybe decide to go to school later on. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, you're the type of person that wants to join the SWAT team or something, then we're going to know that you're going to do those things that it takes to get physically fit for the SWAT team. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we look for uh, open-mindedness, someone that has the aptitude, um, and, and someone that ha- has the ability to learn, mm-hmm. um, learn as you go. Uh, yeah. qu- quick learners is, is probably one of the things that I look for the most. I don't care if you 
come in with just a GED. Yeah. Uh, but if you have the ability to pick things up and retain information as we go, mm -hmm. that's probably um, going to stand out more to me than someone that has a bachelor's degree coming in yeah. that, that can't remember crap. Yeah. Degrees don't mean that you're no. able to do the job no, at all. Some of the stupidest people I know have degrees. <laughs> I like to say C's get degrees, but right. that's well, just yeah, me. <laughs> but, you know, but book, you know, book smarts doesn't necessarily mean equate street smarts. street smarts, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And back in the 90s, early 90s, um, <clears throat> The FBI had a recruiting initiative where they were targeting uh, Mormons. Mm -hmm. And I, one of my good friends is Mormon, and he told me about this initiative. And, um, and I did the research on it, and it failed in just a few years mm -hmm. because they found that um, largely the people they were looking for, and not just th – this isn't the Mormon mold um, as, as a whole, but they were specifically targeting those that were Eagle Scouts that uh, grew up in um, environments that were more – um, sheltered, I guess. Mm -hmm. And they found that, um, uh, yeah, the integrity and the morals were way up there, but they were, you know, bad guys were running circles around them because they were just messing with them. Yeah. They weren't street smart. Yeah. They weren't street savvy. Yeah. So I think it's, you, we're going to have to find a unique, and obviously we want the integrity there. We want mm -hmm. the morals up there. Yeah. But you need someone that's been through life experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, someone that's going to recognize when they're being, when the wool's being pulled over their eyes. Yeah. Common which, sense factor. Is it the wool? The sheets being pulled over. Shoot. Wool. The wool. Why? Wool has been pulled over your sense. eyes. Wool. Yeah. Why would wool be pulled over your eyes? I don't eyes? know. Maybe they're throwing Who a blanket over them. Sun, I guess. <laughs> but no, they need yeah. people to realize that when that's happening, um, and people that are able to adjust their mannerisms and their tone as you have the to be able to read people is being evolved. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. um, so that's hard. How do you put that on paper and say, this is a specific type yeah. of officer? Because you can't, it's, yeah, yeah. You, it's learned on the job. It is. Mm -hmm. And so that I think more importantly than someone that's absolutely ready to do the job is we look for someone that's willing to change, has the mm -hmm. aptitude to change and evolve and learn. Yeah. Uh, cause when I first started, I only had my high school diploma. Yeah, me too. I, well, and I think that is, I don't, I don't know if that's throughout California, but basically for us, at least our department, you only need a high school diploma or a GED to yeah. get started. Most agencies, it, it's still the case in California, Southern California. Uh, there's several agencies that require a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. uh, Beverly Hills does, Irvine does, uh, a lot of the OC agencies do. Mm -hmm. And that just goes to show the um, amount of competition that's in the area. Yeah. I wish that wasn't a hard, fast rule. I wish agencies would say the minimum required is a high school diploma. However, bachelor's degrees are highly uh, desired. Yeah. That way yeah. it doesn't eliminate someone that has a bachelor's degree that yeah. might be a really good candidate. And yeah. Well, not only that, but then they can start younger because yeah. I feel like if you have to work until you're 65, if you started what, 21 or yeah. something like you're going to be in your seventies then. Yeah. That's horrible. Can you imagine me a 70 year old cop or dispatcher? Well, we, we like, had one. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. I think he's an exception yeah. to the rule, but for the most part, at, and and not even him. I mean, he kept physically, mentally fit. Yeah, he was ridiculous. But um, yeah, he really set the bar high. He wasn't even human. But um, but for the most for the most officers and or dispatchers, like your your health is going to be bad. You're you're going to be mentally drained. You mm -hmm. know, like you need to retire at that point. Yeah, this would be really uh, unfortunately, hard. The, the retirement age changed because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people did not like the fact that cops in California got to retire at 50. Yeah. And, but the thing is we, we work if, you know, I started when I was 22 Yeah, and I, as it is, I have to work a couple of years past 50, mm -hmm. um, to collect a full retirement. The thing is, those are hard years. Yeah. Not just hard physically, but hard emotionally, mentally. Yeah. People are constantly judging you, yelling at you. You know, when we, when we encounter people in our line of work, it's never for a good thing, right? Nobody yeah. calls 911 because um, they want to invite a cop over for, oh, hey, we, we had extra <laughs> yeah. food. Yeah. How would you want to, and, and then when we initiate the contact, it's almost not for anything good. You yeah. Know? It, it, when yeah. we pull people over for traffic enforcement, we ruin their day. Yeah. So it's never, I'm I shouldn't say never because we have had positive encounters, but but for the most part, initially, it, it's, yeah. it's negative. Yeah. And that compounds year after year after year. We had a really rough week, um, mm -hmm. and and some of us were uh, we had more engagement in it than others, and um, everybody handles it differently. But I think it's it it's also reflective of how much time you have on the job, mm -hmm. yeah. Because things compound and, and experiences too, yeah. Because what if this specific incident was the only thing that bad that happened to me in my lifetime? Um, I would probably just be like okay with it. But you take that incident and compound it on top of all the other bad things that have happened yeah. in my life. It's just like. 
man, can we get a break? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and that's exactly what we, what we did. We, we took a little bit of a break. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I keep wanting to talk about it because it's, it's so fresh. It, 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 I know. it just happened this week. Um, it's on the news and it's, my wife, anytime I watch the news, she'll look at my phone. Like, what are you watching? What are you yeah. reading? And, yeah. um, yeah, it's just one of those things that we we'll have to wait till next week to talk about it because it's going to yeah. take up. It may it may be one of our longer episodes, but um, but yeah, I, I'm glad that you're able to give some insight as to um, what it takes because I I know there are people that listen to this job mm-hmm. that aren't in our job, mm-hmm. but are interested in, in yeah. doing this as a career field. So just to recap, uh, you have to. Ha- I think the the number one thing to take away from this is obviously you have to meet the qualifications, mm-hmm. but you have to have an open mind mm-hmm. and a willingness to, to learn as you go. Yeah. And if you're deficient in any of those areas, like if you're deficient in being open-minded, yeah. uh, that's something you need to work on personally. Yeah. And if you, <laughs> if you don't think you're a quick learner, then that's something you have to develop. You have to develop yeah. the ability to, to learn. I can't, nobody can teach you that. Yeah. You have to figure out a way to do that yourself. I, I would say to be open to criticism. Oh yeah. You're going to have to. It's a good one. And you know, it's for your own good. And, um, I just want to throw out there too, that if you're, if you're teetering, whether or not you want to do this type of job, most agencies welcome you to do a sit along and dispatch and just kind of see what we're doing. And I would say go a couple of different times because different times, different hours or different days of the week, holidays, it's, you know, you get a different dynamic each and every time. And then same with officers, you can go on ride alongs. Yeah. You have to schedule it, but you can go on it and then make sure you bring a list of questions to ask the dispatcher or the officer. Yeah. Well, come on. We, you've been on ride alongs. I know. I mean, I know, I know most officers don't like having. No, no, it's not. not that's not. Ride alongs. That's, that's a secret. No. Or sit alongs. So sometimes we're just so drained that day. Yeah, it's not that we. Have you ever met anybody that's been on a ride along that was like, oh yeah, yeah I don't, I don't want to do this job. No, everybody wants to do the job after a ride along. Everybody wants to do it, but you have to understand that you have to work graveyards some days. Yeah. Some days you have to work holidays. Yeah. You're going to miss out on right. family events. Right. It's not always that's fun. And think... you do have to push a lot of paper sometimes. Oh, it's not always yeah. chasing bad guys. Yeah, 75% right. of the job is paper. Yeah. But the thing is, I think the ride along gives a really, um, <laughs> it's a skewed look at what the, it what is. the job is. Because everybody does the ride along and they're super excited because yeah. they went through, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. But nobody a- actually sees um, the other stuff, the missed, ho- like you mentioned, the missed holidays, the paperwork. The yeah, that's true. Well, it's not like anybody's going to come on a ride along on Christmas either. That's true. You know, they're Maybe not going to. And why aren't you picking that day, guys, to go on a ride along? Because right. it's a holiday yeah. and you don't want to miss out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that trainee we had that uh, while on training said, uh, what are the chances I'll, I'll be able to get Christmas off? Oh, like, yeah. My, oh, yeah. Uh, pretty slim. <laughs> About zero to <laughs> none. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I think that wraps up our show today. And as always, we thank you for welcoming into us into your homes, your offices, and on your drive. Um, I listen to our podcast on our drive because I... I do sometimes, I, too. I like to listen to our voice. No, I, <laughs> no, I always constantly... L- Think I critique myself. Ways to change. Yeah, um, and we're only in episode nine. This is not episode nine, and we're constantly um, evolving and learning. Mm-hmm. So uh, we appreciate the feedback that you guys are giving us. The reviews have all been positive, so please don't leave us a negative review. Uh, <laughs> but if there's something that constructive you'd like to say, you can follow us on our social media pages. You can follow Kristen at Dispatcher Kristen, and that's on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, and you can follow me on most platforms at nine one one strong. And if you'd like to follow along, if you're a fan of our podcast, you can follow along at the underscore 911 strong underscore podcast. Mm-hmm. And that's currently just on Instagram. And we hope to expand on our um, platforms later. But thanks again for joining us, guys. If you like this episode, you can binge listen back to episode one. You can follow us on most major podcast platforms like <laughs> Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Play. And you can watch our podcast on YouTube. And as always, we'd appreciate a subscription and share us with your friends. And maybe leave us a five-star review. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Please. Helps us in the Keep us going. Yeah. Yeah. So far, we're doing fantastic. Thanks to your help. And we'd love that to continue. We want this momentum to go straight up. All right. I think we're done. Yeah, I think so. We really need a way to, we need a catchphrase. (laughs) We do. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Bye. Take care. You've been listening to the 911 Strong Podcast with Aram and Kristen. You can subscribe to the 911 Strong Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and many other fine podcast platforms. You can also see the in-studio recording on YouTube. Just search 911 Strong. We value your opinion. 
please leave us a review, and we would really appreciate a five-star rating. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to tell your friends about us.